In this movie, we view the main configuration file in Cassandra, which is called cassandra.yaml. So here in the directory where Cassandra is installed, we have a variety of subdirectories which contain tools and configuration files for Cassandra. Let's take a look in the conf folder. cd space conf ls to see the contents. And inside of here, I see various configuration files that we'll be learning about as we go forward in this course. The one we'd like to look at right now, and is the main configuration file of Cassandra, is cassandra.yaml. Let's go ahead and enter vim, which is a text editor, and then cassandra.yaml so that we can see the contents of this file. And if we scroll down, we can take a look at a few of these properties. Down here on line 10, I see cluster name. As we'll be learning, when we go to add nodes to a cluster, each of the nodes in the cluster has to have the same cluster name. Let's scroll down a little bit more. Num tokens. This goes back to virtual nodes. And this is where you specify the number of token ranges that you want this node to take on. Scroll down a bit further to line 91. Partitioner. Earlier we learned what a partitioner does, and here we can see that the partitioner that's been set up is Murmur3. Scroll down a bit more, we see data file directories. This is where we specify where the data in our database is going to be stored on this node. Let's jump down to line 564. I could scroll down there, or if we press slash and type endpoint underscore snitch, jump down to that area, scroll down just a little bit here to find the endpoint snitch property, and you see that it's set to simple snitch. And that's fine for now. Later on in the course, though, when we go to set up our cluster to spread across more than one data center, we'll be coming in and changing this. So what we've been looking at, cassandra.yaml, is the main configuration file for Cassandra. We'll be working with this file as we go forward. There'll be times where we want to come in and look at additional properties, and times where we'll need to make changes. Having taken a look at it, let's go ahead and exit. If you type colon Q and hit enter, that's going to go ahead and take you out back to the command line prompt.